All right, welcome back. Episode 157 of Chaotically Intolerant. Uh, Michael is here. We are in person. We're here to talk baseball. We're here to talk, uh, I think you were saying, basically the first inning of the baseball season has officially ended, I guess. Um, it's been an interesting season, to say the least, the uniform fiasco. Uh, we'll cover a lot of different stuff. And uh, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share. Uh, again, throw it on your TV while you're gone for your dog or your kids or your cat or your turtle, whatever pet you have. I'm sure they want to listen to us as well. Get those watch hours up. And uh, let's go. So, where do we want to start here? I mean, the, the uniforms again, because I think we can tie this into the NFL because the NFL draft is coming up. Yeah. Um, the NFL is just dunking on Major League Baseball once again, showing that they can be competent with their uniforms. The yeah. Jets rolling out the throwbacks. That's right. The Browns today announced the white, the white face mask, mask, which is, I mean, it was a travesty. It never went away, right. in my opinion. And then, uh, who was the other one? There was one more uniform chain or uh, oh the jaguars are going to bring back the throwbacks oh as well they like those they haven't they didn't show the reveal yet but they announced they were bringing back the throwbacks okay very exciting all right yeah the uh, mark brunel jimmy smith keenan mccardell throwbacks mm -hmm. um so bryce harper decided to wear a jersey from last season oh. <laughs> this past week okay. because the lettering was clearly you know said Harper and it was big and it looked right yeah um, and then I think Cody Bellinger's pants tore sliding into third this past couple couple days ago I was like Seinfeld uh, George yeah. you know and Mattingly's pants just split yeah yeah um, just not good I don't I really don't I don't get it I don't understand why this is so hard for for an organization as big as Major League Baseball they yeah they don't know how to market I mean that's why they're always gonna be well below what the NFL does. Mm -hmm. Second man. I, I don't know what they can do. Like, now they got to like really double down on their efforts. They got to bring back every throwback known to man. They got to come up with all kinds of cool stuff. It's, it's just a bad look. I'm, I'm surprised we haven't seen, like, I mean, you could have the Nationals wear the Expos jerseys. Yes. Although yeah. I think In that was. 2019, would... the 15th year anniversary was great. They wore it right around July 4th. Uh, and they barely worn them. I don't even know if they've worn them. I think the I think it would drive people up a wall because they want Montreal. They want a team in Montreal. Yeah, they, they would. But people love. I, mean, I still see people repping Expos gears at yeah. Nats games, and it's they really should pay homage at least every couple of years. I yeah. mean, those those uniforms are fantastic, and mm -hmm. the, the, the MEE logo. People don't really realize it's ME, but it's just, it's just yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of hidden stuff in that logo. There's there's a, a Montreal Expos, and then I think there's a baseball glove. And a baseball as well hidden in that. I think is that the or you might be thinking. Or maybe I'm thinking of the Brewers. The Brewers is the MB and it's got the yeah. ball and the glove. Yeah. Which they're not getting their City Connect uniforms until like June, because well, they're out of stock. Get rid of City Connect altogether and bring back those '90s Brewers uniforms, the '80s ones, and Robin Yount. I think they should just go with a lot more throwbacks. Yeah. I mean, because ba baseball, the teams have been around. Some of them have been around 100 years. Yeah. We I mean, have like when you play the show. Get all these cool uniform variations. You can wear like the '68 batting practice jersey, the '83 alternate rook. Just, just do that. Yeah. Don't worry about the material, doing all this funky stuff and making it look new age. Just, just bust out the throwbacks. Plus, I mean, baseball is like objectively an old sport. That's yeah. That's its market. Like, you know, old sport, but a lot of young people love the older looks about it. Like, yeah. I don't know why they're not going back to that. Uh, I love the Red Sox, like the 70s, the 60s and 70s, Carlton Fisk era, those uniforms, which are not even jerseys, they're jerseys, basically. But, I mean, fanatics would find a way to screw it up anyways, so. Yeah. Which we've also been, Chaotic Intolerance has been blocked from tagging Major League Baseball in posts oh, wow. because, of, because of my continuous assault on Major League Baseball and their incompetence yeah. when it comes to the uniforms, so. That's a win for us. Yeah. Um, let's let's jump into baseball. So I'm trying to think. You were on two weeks. I think it was two weeks ago. Um, did you say something about the Pirates? I'm trying to think about our winners and losers from a well, couple then, weeks the ago. Well, the Pirates have got or, to a great start, and mm -hmm. they've predictably, as they did last year, come back to earth. Um, I'm still pretty high on the Royals. Uh, I don't remember if I said that at the time because I think the Royals, like the first week, 
And it was like, okay. And then they had, a, I think, a seven-game winning streak. And then we yeah. saw a lot of Bobby Witt, what he can do. We see Salvador Perez finding the fountain of youth. I, I, you know, April baseball is a time to dream for a lot of these teams, especially the, especially the Central Division, both Central Divisions. I mean, check them out. Look at the standings. You got... I think in the in the is the NL Central where every team has a winning record or close uh, to it. I know the Cardinals are nine and ten, but yeah. everybody's like confident right now. And then mm-hmm. in the AL Central, you got Cleveland, Kansas City, and Detroit all in double digit wins. Yeah. Minnesota's terrible, but I could Chicago play. also. White Sox are horrendous. They did win one game today in the doubleheader, but yes, they are an embarrassment. Uh, but those other teams like Kansas City looks good. Cleveland looks pretty solid. I mean, Detroit, yeah, maybe. Uh, that's the biggest. That's the biggest surprise for me in general. Is that both central divisions look competitive and competent? Yeah, I, I think it's great because we the central division, uh, either central division, neither central division has sent a team to the World Series since both did in 2016. What about Houston? They're they're in oh, the cellar right now. Uh, yeah, how great is this? Six and fourteen swept for the third time this year. Uh, minus twenty three run differential. Ryan Presley with an ERA close to 10. Josh Hader with an ERA close to 9. Uh, Framber Valdez, we don't wish injuries, so hopefully he comes yeah. back. But he's uh, on the IL. They're already without Verlander, you mentioned he'll be back. They're already without McCullers. Who knows if he'll come back. And um, it's crazy because Altuve's off to an amazing start. Mm-hmm. Alvarez has turned it around. He homered again today. Kyle Tucker, solid. You know, It's just the pitching has just been atrocious for the yeah. Astros. Um, but the bad news is for Astros haters is nobody's stepping up in that division. Like Texas is like ten and nine in their first place yeah. right now, and it's like it's so bad that even the Angels and Athletics might think they have a chance. The Athletics are two, two games, games out of out first. first place with a minus twenty two run differential. Um, I just remember um, who was on last time. Uh, what's his name? Caleb. Caleb. Yeah. Yeah, and. Um, we were saying take the over on the A's. That was actually a great idea. I it think was they like were fifty-eight and a half, yeah. seven and a half. Something. They were set at a, at a horrible number. Yeah, a horrible, horrible number. Can they avoid a hundred losses? I think they can. Maybe, yeah. maybe. I mean, I, I'll tell you who looks real nasty. For them. Mason Miller. They found themselves a closer. You know, until he inevitably blows his arm out. He's yeah. twenty-five, throwing one hundred and three, uh, and so you know that usually doesn't end well. But yeah, I mean, even the Angels, like Mike. It's, I'm just I'm glad Mike Trout's back. Yeah, but baseball missed him. Yeah, especially with Otani off that team, you got to have some reason to watch the Angels. Mm-hmm. Um, actually, Reed Detmers has been he's he's been lights out because you know yeah. he's faced the Red Sox twice and yeah. he faced the Orioles in the other outing, and he's been outstanding every outing. So, and because they were connected to Blake Snell, people were talking about yeah. the Angels, and I, every team that didn't sign Blake Snell is probably smiling right now, yeah. seeing he's gotten lit up in two starts mm-hmm. from the Giants. So. I think some of the overreactions come from player performances, too. You know, you always forget, yeah. like, oh, it's April and this guy's hitting 180, or this guy's ERA is not. But, you know, you yeah. have five months, five-plus months in this case to correct it. Yeah, like uh, uh, we can talk about the Red Sox. Mm-hmm. Um, our offense is atrocious. Like, that's Sad. that's been the problem, which yeah. that was not expected to be the problem, which right. is almost, in my opinion, a little better because it's like, okay, you know, this is something that we can probably fix. Like, we most likely will fix this. Tyler O'Neill, I think, is I tied for the say, league lead. Yeah, at least that trade's worked out. I mean, the, the Red Sox are tied for sixth in homers right now yeah. in the league. So, But we're just not capitalizing on our pitchers. Mm-hmm. I mean, our starting pitchers are fantastic. Kenley Jansen is done. He's he's cooked. I mean, he's been horrible. They should have traded him at... Like in, in spring training. I think Dodger fans would tell you he's been cooked for years. <laughs> he, he had an okay year last year. Yeah, he did. He was okay. So did Chris Martin, but now he's on the shelf, right? I think he's hurt. Yeah, Martin's hurt. Um, yeah, we we lost we lost a lot of guys. It's, yeah. it's been really ugly. It's been I mean, it's been like that. Like when O'Neill and Devers collided in the outfield, mm, I was like, Oh my god, the, it's just never gonna end. It is never gonna end. Trevor Story obviously done yes. for the year, which he can't stay healthy. What is it with the Rocky? I mean, you look at Chris Bryant. You were yeah. just talking about Chris Bryant. It's like, uh Well, that poor guy's just stuck there. He's stuck there. <laughs> I mean, he signed there willingly, but yeah, he's stuck there. Um, but Baltimore found their footing, which, of course, they had to find their footing on the day we honor Tim Wakefield, which mm. I think that's... Uh, 
I think you, as a representative of the Baltimore Orioles, should apologize <laughs> for doing for doing that on the day that we honor his children. Were there? Oh. They've lost both parents. His oh children God. were there, and the Baltimore Orioles decided we're going to kick the Red Sox ass. Well, they, that was <laughs> I forget which game they called Holiday up for. I mean, that, uh, it was the, the game. I think, I think it was the first game of that series. The third game. What was it? The third game. Okay. I think the it was not the first game. Extra innings, right? And he looks, you know, but understandably overmatched for a twenty-year-old. Um, he's, well, he's a, he's a bust. He didn't get a hit in his first fifteen at bats. He's right. clearly a bust. Well, he's been striking out a lot. I don't understand how he has so much hair and his dad is completely bald. I guess yeah. it skips a generation. It um, but he looks he looks overwhelmed. But yeah, the Orioles they uh, they made history today. They I think it was their fifth straight game with three or more homers. They hit a walk off homer, swept the Twins. They also have an incredible streak going. I think it's like the third longest streak in history of not being swept. I think they've been swept in a series since 2022. So when all last Jesus. year, they did not, at least a series of three games, because a series of two games is not a series. That's just a pair of yeah. games. Uh, but you're right about the Red Sox, because I'm looking, they, they have a 282 ERA mm -hmm. behind only, who would have guessed this, Kansas City, who the Orioles will face this weekend. Kansas City, yeah, and they made some very quiet upgrades to their pitching staff mm -hmm. this offseason. Um, and it's a shame because who's the guy in the Red Sox pitcher that Crawford? Got like Cutter a Crawford. zero is yep. ERA under one. Yeah. Um, and Tanner Houck's pitching tonight, and they have a well, I had a one nothing lead last I saw. Uh, I think we still well. do, unless that oh, yeah, two nothing lead. Nothing, yeah. Connor Wong, Wong Dong. <laughs> yeah, uh, but yeah, Houck four uh, shutout innings, got an ERA of one sixty six. The starting pitching's been great. I think yeah. the bullpen has been iffy, which mm -hmm. I mean every team's always. You know, it's hard to have a truly dominant bullpen. Yeah. Uh, but it's kind of the same story as last year where the Red Sox, okay, they're at 500 and they're in last place. Yeah. In the A.L.A.s. Toronto, 10 and 9. Last year we won We won 78 games and we were in last place. We I think we would have finished in like third in the Central. Yeah. Yeah. Remember the All-Star break, you guys were up, would have been up like a game in the Central in first place. Yeah. I remember that was a thing. Like mm -hmm. The Twins were like a game under 500 or a game over. Yeah. And the Red Sox had a better record and were in last. And get this, our ERA in away games is 149. Wow. At home, well, it's 456. Sense. Yeah, it makes sense. Fenway Park being a, a hitter's ballpark. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm trying to see because I, I know, like, our, that not even the stats back it up, but if you just look at the, you know, inning by inning of each game, yeah, it's like, okay, zero, 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 you know, maybe a couple runs sprinkled in there, and then it's just explosion, 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 and seventh, eighth, and ninth inning. Yeah. The only problem is our guys don't go as deep as they need to go. Our starters yeah, don't. And, you know, young pitchers, they just, they don't train them to go long anymore. It's hard. I mean, you, I'd love to see these guys throwing eight innings in the minors, yeah. but they just won't let them. Well, and I think Pedro Martinez addressed this because they were talking about the issue with Tommy John, mm -hmm. and he was like, I don't think it's the pitch clock. I think it has to do with these guys are weightlifting their strength training. When Pedro would do, like, resistance training, he said he would um, basic, basically, like, lengthen his ligaments and, mm -hmm. and just strengthen his ligaments. So, you know, you're not – like, obviously, you have stronger ligaments. Like, your muscles are only so helpful if your ligaments are weak. You're right. gonna You're going to tear everything. No matter what, they can't handle the pressure. Right. And these guys are—they're also cocking back, like Tyler Glass. Now you look at him throw a baseball; like his arm is almost completely flat yeah. at some point, like right here. That—that that can't be good for an elbow to keep no. doing that twenty-four-seven. Well, he just had Tommy John what, last year, or the year before. I mean, it's yeah. I, I don't understand. And, and anytime you see a guy now throwing triple digits and he's young, you're just like, all right, how many years until the Tommy yeah. John? I remember a role as Chapman. And when he would start, when he started, when he threw that like 106 mile an hour pitch, it was like, oh my god, this is the fast guy, and there's really no other fast guys. Right. And now it's like, oh, well, he's just another guy. Yeah. He's just another pitcher out there that can throw 100, uh, you know, 106 at his very best. Right. Right. Yeah. It's and and he's well, he's probably had to evolve into quote unquote more of a pitcher now because he's down to what like 98, 99. Yeah. It's not like the freak show that he. He once was. And, I mean, he actually, I mean, I don't think he, he's been one of the rare guys that has mostly avoided arm injuries. As far as, yeah. he's had some other injuries, some, some other issues where, didn't he have, like, a tattoo that messed up his leg or something? Some, some sort of infection. Infection, yeah. yeah. And, and, of course, he had some off-the-field stuff. But, yeah, <laughs> but, but amazingly, his arm has not, I mean, as far as I know, he hasn't had any arm problems, which yeah. is kind of crazy to think about. Mm. 
Yeah. Um, let's talk, Bal- uh, I guess, a little bit more Baltimore because All right. they're, you know, they're sitting right behind the Yankees, which the Yankees are doing the thing that they always do, where they make you believe. Like Juan Soto the other day, uh, he's the problem is with Juan Soto is he's looking for a walk in the big moments mm-hmm. where he needs to not look for a walk, where he needs to end the game. Right. I think they had like maybe second and third, it was the bottom of the ninth or something, and he's just looking for a walk. Right. He's not, he, it's basically like in football, like the quarterback saying, no, I don't, I don't want the ball. I want you to run the ball mm. with two minutes left in the fourth quarter. Yeah. Like that's equivalent to what it is. Now, is this early season? Could be. I mean, you never know. But doesn't really look good. I mean, the Yankees, again, they're 13-6 and six for a reason. Yeah, I mean, like, the Yankees, they're doing it without Cole. What worries me is they're doing it without a whole lot from Aaron Judge. But it still feels like smoke and mirrors to a certain extent, mm-hmm. the Yankees. Because I'll never buy that Nestor, Nestor Cortez should be that good. And he's also he's balking all over the place. Oh, my God. The, the fake? The, f- what, the pump fake? What are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> I mean, and, and thing you can seen. talk about umpires as well. Angel Hernandez. Oh my God! Yeah. He's I I have no clue why he's actually umpiring. Like I don't What's understand on somebody. They they must have a shortage or well, something. That, yeah. Uh, is there like some shortage? Ten year he has some sort of he's unfireable. I mean this is ridiculous. Uh, that wasn't there. He had a strikeout where his three straight pitches were just completely off the plate. I, think I heard that. Yeah, I didn't even see it. I didn't even want to watch it. I figured it would make me too upset. It's so like every every person in every comment section is like, why is this guy here? I've never seen somebody so collectively hated. Yeah, and like even I mean, you know, because yeah. you never hear like referee. If anything, it's like, oh, Ed Hockley, he's cool, he's got the guns. Yeah, you know? but nobody's ever like, oh, this one referee. I mean, but Angel Hernandez has be- it's become a thing. It's become a yeah, uh, a running joke. The only other referee you could think of in any sport is uh, the one who bet on basketball games. Oh right. He had the gambling scandal, which again, another NBA player just or an NBA player just got banned. Mm. For life today. I'd still rather have an umpire who bets on games than a guy who makes these calls. The Angel Hernandez calls. I mean, at least there's a reason, right? At least it's at least it's not you're incompetent and you're still getting paid, what, $500,000 a year? I yeah. mean, how much is this guy getting paid? Because he, he's a veteran umpire. Right. And he's somehow made his way here. He's got to have, like him and, him and Rob Manfred have to be sleeping together. Yeah, that's what I said. Or he's got some serious dirt on him. Wow, yeah. Just watched the one where he got he run the guy. No, it was an eight to one game in the fourth inning. I guess he just they just direct. It's just a rec league thing. You just you know they they do that. The guy will say the umpires will say to us in the rec league, "Hey, I'm opening up the zone yeah. a little bit." So we're we're getting this game over. Getting this over. Yeah. As, as a former football ref in a youth league, yeah. they would tell us just run the clock. Just run the clock. Yeah. Don't don't stop on anything. Yeah. Just run the clock. Maybe speed it up to like one point five. Yeah. Because we're all tired. We're all hot. It's forty to seven. Here, like this game is not right, right. That's not happening. Somebody made a good point that it was like in the because it was to a righty and it was outside that it was like if it was an overlay of Anthony Rizzo, it would have hit him and been called a strike because <laughs> you know Rizzo stands so close to the play. About the, I don't know if you saw the Gronk spike on Patriots Day. No. So he threw out the first pitch, except he didn't actually throw it. He acted like he was going to throw it, and then he spiked the ball yeah. into the ground. And someone was like, "Oh yeah, Angel Hernandez called that a strike." A strike yeah. I was like, yeah, he probably did. Yeah. He he probably he wouldn't have called a balk on it. He doesn't know what a balk is. You know, Gronk had the thing where he didn't he take the Lombardi and he swung it with the baseball. Yeah. Remember that? And he yeah, the Lombardi. That was that was opening day. Yeah, yeah. Which I mean, it's the most Gronk thing. Sure. Ever. Sure. God, it makes me. You know, all this Kelsey stuff makes me miss Gronk. Never over. It was never too much Gronk. Yeah. I, mean, I, I saw something. I saw someone say that Gronk was trying to be Kelsey when he when he did the spike. Oh, like the yeah, spiking right. the baseball, the I was like, "It's like what the hell is this? Does this guy has this guy like just lived under a rock until yeah Gronk's, five years ago?" Gronk's the OG. Gronk will always be the OG. Of course. Um, I was gonna say something about OJ Simpson, but then, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I've been I've been <laughs> I've been watching the uh, the People versus OJ Simpson, oh, yeah. the Hulu documentary, and it's really interesting how they try and make you sympathetic with OJ right, in that right. documentary. The OJ sympathizers, yeah. 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 Um, I I mean I liked him in Naked Gun, but that was before I knew all that. I mean that was actually the last one was just before the trial happened. Just before the last that. Naked Gun. The movie? last one was like ninety three, and then the trial was ninety four. It is in like oh, I 
I, I think somebody like asked me like what would be a moment you would want to go back in time for and like I have my chalk ones I have the 2004 comeback you know yeah for, with the Red Sox and I have um, probably the Colts winning the Super like a few yeah. chalk ones but one underrated one is I want to go and just live through that the live only. through like the night Nicole dies which mm-hmm. is extremely sad mm-hmm. and and Ron Goldman I never I don't like to forget yeah the both yeah, of them. Yeah. And then up until the verdict, like I would love to do that and just see like how America changes. Cause like OJ was, yeah. OJ was I, from what people talk about him, he was one of the most lovable people on the planet. Nobody hated him. Right. Like he, he was like as universal love as Angel Hernandez has universal, universal hate. hate. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it just switched. Yeah. Like overnight, which is crazy. Just crazy. Like. I don't even know who to equate it to now. Like, who would be so universally loved now? And then they just commit a murder, and it's like... Taylor Swift. No, she's she has her haters. There's a lot of haters. Kanye fans hate her. Oh, right. NFL fans wrongly hate her, which is... Right, wrongly, yeah. I mean, she increased the NFL salary cap this year. That's she's the, the reason why. That's, the, uh, that's what they say. I don't know yeah. if that's totally true. I hope that's not true. <laughs> she's able to resign Chris Jones. But, um, yeah... Yeah. Um, anyways, yeah, enough OJ. It's just when he died, it just got me right back into – I'm always interested by, like, sports crime when it yeah. comes to stuff like that. Like, there was a murderer in the in the 70s who played on a football team. He, like, would travel around and kill people playing for the Redskins. Is that right? Yeah. it's I've, I've, That's a very surface-level thing on it, but he would – Who is it? I'm going to look that up. Eric Rivera Jr. Oof. Oh no, no, that yeah, was uh, Sean Taylor. Taylor. Yeah, that was Sean Taylor. There's, there was someone else. Nope, not Aaron Hernandez. Not Ray Carruth. I remember, I remember that story actually following that as a kid. The Ray Carruth one was pretty messed up. He was a receiver for Carolina, and he had a hitman kill his pregnant wife, or tried to. But the baby survived. The baby's alive, grown up now. That's awful. But the wife died. Yeah. Not him. Teenage football player. No, this was back. I know this was real. This definitely happened at some point. Sounds like a movie. Oh, Robert. I think Robert Rozier. He killed four people. That's who it is. Oh, he played for the St. Louis Cardinals. Mm. Wow. He committed the acts on behalf of the Nation of Yahweh, Black Hebrew Israelite religious movement. Uh, Yeah, not good. Aaron Hernandez, obviously comes up as one of them. Or Tommy Kane. Hold on. No. That's just one wife. I think it was I think it was the guy who played for the Cardinals. <laughs> OJ even <laughs> oh, they even have OJ in this in this one. Oh boy. Well anyways, enough of the murderer talk. Um yeah, back to baseball. Back to baseball. Uh let's see, what else here? Uh the Mets yeah, the Mets are actually yeah, off to such a decent rotten start. Yeah, they were they lost the first five, I think, all at home, mm-hmm. um, and uh, I guess they're ten and three since. Yeah, um, and they haven't even seen JD Martinez yet. He's dealing with the back problem. Um, they just tore apart the Pirates today, nine to one. Yeah. They're uh, yeah, like the Mets. They're one of those teams. They always seem to do at some point every season. They have this big run, yeah. whether it's in. August or whether it's in April, I don't know. And they, well, I think it's the what the Mets do. They, they make you believe. They <laughs> make, the Mets make you believe. But the thing is, the Mets do have a pretty, pretty solid lineup. And if you throw Martinez in there, if he can contribute, certainly they have some pop. Lindor, Alonzo, Starling Marte. I've always liked Starling Marte. Mm-hmm. Brandon Nimmo's had a couple of big games. McNeil, they can hit. And who knew? Luis Severino had another great outing. He's got a two point one four ERA. Early on, and then you know they're doing this without Senga. He's That's gonna be true. out a while. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously they they tried the whole you know Verlander Scherzer thing last year. It didn't, didn't really work. No Degrom. So they're kind of piecing their their rotation back together. But we'll see. A big test for them this weekend. They go to L.A. to face a slumping Dodgers team. Speaking of things that make me smile, they, twelve and nine. Twelve and nine just got shut out by the Nationals today. Lost two of three at home. Uh, lost two or three at home to the Padres. Mm-hmm. The weird thing is, it, it's like 12 and If you said after 21 games, Dodgers would be 12 and 9, you wouldn't even think much. They'd be, yeah, okay, that's, yeah, 
pretty, you know, maybe they think they'd be 13 and 8, 14 and 7. Yeah. But they're not, they really haven't had any of those games where they've just done what we've expected. Like those 14 run outbursts. Yeah. It's, the run differential right now is only plus 12. I know it's early. I know they have some guys out. But the weird thing is the guys that are out, it, it's it's been in their rotation. And that hasn't been the problem. It feels like offensively they haven't put it together. Yeah. Because yesterday, Mookie Betts had five hits. It's the third time in his career he had a five. Which he was on a historic tear early in to the start, year. To right. start the year. Yeah. Right. And so last night, they're playing the Nationals. You got the worst pitcher in baseball, Patrick Corbett. Sad mm-hmm. to see what he's turned into, yeah. basically. And if I told you that Corbin was pitching, Mookie Betts was going to have five hits at the top line, you'd have thought the Dodgers would win 15 to 1. They went 6 to 2. Still had to use their high leverage reliever. It's just, yeah. it's odd to me. I don't know if it's just because it's a bunch of good individuals. They don't, they're not built to, you know, or maybe. What about just, the gambling thing? Maybe. Maybe there's a little, I mean, you know, it hasn't affected Otani's hitting. I mean, he had three hits today, but um, it just. The offense isn't clicking. Yeah. And I hope that's a sign of things to come, or it may just be, hey, it's only 21 games, and they're going to have a typical summer like they do. But the Padres are hanging in there. The Padres are 3-2 and two against them right now, right? I think they played them five times. Well, yeah, they and played they, those the first off. The, those two games. and that's That can't happen. They can't have that happen. They can't do the two games, two regular season games. Over a in Korea, week before and then else make plays. them play more spring training games. I would have been fine if they just said, "All right, you come back." Yeah, no well, more games. Those two teams shouldn't have come back. Yeah, spring training. There's no reason they should have. That didn't make any. Maybe sense. Maybe send out all the minor league guys. Just make it like a minor league camp more than anything. But don't bring the the right the full squad over back for more spring. It just makes no sense. There's the NFL. When would the NFL do that? When would the NBA do that? I mean. The NFL will, probably would do that if it could, but it, <laughs> you know they're playing a game to start the year in Brazil on a Friday. The Eagles, yeah, and yeah. then they're doing a Christmas Day game on a Wednesday. So, yeah, I don't know if talk about it. But <laughs> anyway, the, the, so the Padres, I, you know, it's funny. I, I was thinking about how the Padres the last few years it's been like every other year, right? Twenty 2020 twenty and twenty twenty two they made the playoffs, mm-hmm. and twenty one and twenty three they had really high expectations, and then any time that the Padres have had expectations they've crumbled, yeah. and then this year they're back to kind of being an underdog, yeah. and you're like, oh the Padres, yeah maybe they'll be scrappy, but then you're like, oh yeah they got Machado, oh yeah they got Tatis and Bogarts and Cronenworth in their lineup, and then it's like, oh yeah they rotate. I mean you said Darvish is on the IL now, but Musgrove they trade for Dylan Cease, they get that guy Yuki Matsui, like they. They still have a really talented roster. And looking at what Snell's done so far this year, Hader's done so far this year. I mean, yeah, they miss Soto, sure, but they don't, you know, they don't even feel like those don't even feel like big losses. Yeah. I think that just the fact that the Padres have played well against the Dodgers early in the year gives me and probably gives them confidence that they can at least make a race of it in the NL West. And you know, you got Arizona, they they're scoring a ton of runs too, but they're just playing all these wild games. Yeah. And uh, just uh, I don't know, I'm talking about the NL West cuz we mentioned Chris Bryant before. The Rockies depress me so much. They really do. I mean, they're my my rec league team is the Rockies. Um, I play as the Rockies in the show. I love the branding. I think Denver's a great city, but they are they just a gorgeous stadium. misrepresenting the city. It's it's terrible. Like they are in such a a pit right now. I mean, they are just bad. I mean, you look at, like, even, like, the Marlins. Okay, they made the playoffs last year. The Nationals, they're getting better. They're doing, like, a proper rebuild. They're coming back. They're an exciting team. Even a team like the Reds that has been kind of blah, like, they have some excitement. The Rockies have nothing. They are pitiful. (laughs) It is painful to watch. They have the uh, worst run differential in the National League, Mm -hmm. second in baseball only to the White Sox. They're getting pounded tonight by the Phillies. So, uh, well, 7-3, and they have the bases loaded in the eighth inning. All right, but they're still probably going to lose that game. It just it just depresses me, and it's just why why can't they be better and spend money? Yeah. Denver's not a small market city. It's mm-hmm. not, they're not, you know, like playing in, I don't, know, I don't know, some tiny little town, and, you know, that. but it's just sad. Yeah. Well, they're matching, they're matching the Broncos right now. <laughs> they're, I mean, right, but at least the Broncos have a Super Bowl in the last decade. Or that's so. true. The Rockies have made one World Series appearance during Rocktober of 2007, and mm-hmm. it was just, as you know, didn't end well for them. No. It ended very well for the Red Sox. Yeah. Which I, I heard a little piece of history on that. In the 07 season, Roger Clemens was a free agent. 
He was. And I it remember was, him being in the booth at, at Yankee Stadium. It was the Red him. Sox or the Yankees on who he was going to choose. Mm. And I think the Red Sox ended up offering him just a little less money than the Yankees, and he took the money. Of Yankees missed the playoffs. And Clemens obviously was on that 86 team that lost, you know, with the Buckner, Buckner uh, error. And uh, the Red Sox won the World Series. And that that World Series is, like, considered forgotten to Red Sox fans. Wait, because Cle- did Clemens ever win a ring? Uh, I think, I don't know if he did. Because he went, no, Yankees, I think he, he did. He did. With, I think yeah, he did. Yeah, he won one with the Yankees. Or, yes, in, in, no, they won two, actually, 99 and 2000. Okay. Oh, yeah, because he threw the bat at Mike Piazza. He threw yes. the bat. He thought it was the ball. Yeah. Quote, unquote. He thought it was the ball. Right? Okay. Yeah, yeah, sure. Right. I'll never <laughs> sure, forget right. him coming back. He was on the microphone. He's like, I'll, I'll be seeing y'all real soon. And he came back for the Yankees. He wasn't good that year. His ERA was 4.18. And the Yankees yeah. lost in the first round of the playoffs to Cleveland. Which also, Kurt Schilling was on that 07 team. On the Red Sox. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Which is was weird it? to think about. Oh, my he God. Did. he wa- Yeah, he was. He, I think he got I think he got shelled. Like, he was not good that year either. Uh, I think he, like, started out. Well, Josh Beckett. I remember Beckett was the Cy Young, but he was really good. He won twenty. I'm looking at it now. No, yeah, he won twenty games that year. Schilling was nine and eight with a three point eight seven ERA, which is pretty good. He threw 150 no, more innings. Yeah. yeah, I mean, his strikeout numbers were down. He was yeah, I mean, Tim Wakefield. We we're talking about Tim Wakefield. Was Seventeen and twelve. Yeah. Dice K was fifteen and twelve, but Beckett was just. And then Lester came up. Uh, he pitched part of that year. I don't know if that was when he came back from his cancer treatment. I think it was. I think he had. Cancer diagnosis in 06, and they had that horrible collapse in 06. They had a really bad, they like started out great that year. That kind of doesn't get talked about because people think about 2011 with the Red Sox. Yeah. But 06, if you look at it, I think the Red Sox were like 22 games over 500, and then they had a five game series at home against the Yankees, the doubleheader, and they got swept, and they called it the Boston Massacre. I remember it. And the, and the Red Sox just got, just completely fell apart that year. Huh. And then rebuild. I did not the know World about Series. that. Yeah, well, there was, I mean, I think if you win the World Series the next year, it's like right. And they were in between because they could come off. Well, oh five, they 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 lost the first round, but oh four, obviously they won. They broke into yeah. first, so everyone was on a high. But it was like, oh yeah, okay, back to the Red Sox being the Red Sox. Yeah, losing, you know, being twenty. Well, I think I think twenty. I think twenty eleven gets more talked about because twenty twelve was. That was the hundred year anniversary of Fenway. Mm. I hate those patches because they have the gr- the green monster patches right. that they wore all year. I cannot stand to see a patch. There, somebody bought me a hat once with the with it on it, and I was like, I don't know mm. if I can take this. This is disgusting. I, yeah. I can't look at this. And then obviously they won in twenty thirteen, but they had that year buffer where they were so bad with Bobby Valentine. Right. That was like right after the changing of the guard too with. You know, Veritek retires, Wake retires, uh, Francona goes to Cleveland. Yeah. So I think they, that's why 2011 is talked about more. I mean, I think it was more of a horrible collapse right. than, than what happened in 06. Um, but 07 is like the forgotten year for nobody, nobody think, as and Red Sox 06, Nation. you mean? Yeah. Oh, no, 07. It's the Forgotten World Series. Oh, Forgotten World Series. Nobody yeah, talks about that one because yeah. 04 is 04. 13 is the marathon. 18 was the greatest team in franchise history. Right. Like by right. far, they would are arguably the greatest team in baseball history. And everyone remembers 86 just because they came so close. And it ended up being 86 years from, they, you know, they oh, broke right. the 86 from year 18 curse. 18 to 04. Yeah, from 1918 18 to 04, 18 to it was an 86 yeah. year curse. And right. then it just, it's just fitting that 86, 1986 World Series, they uh, came so close. Yeah, yeah. So close, that. but just so far away. Which it wasn't Buckner's fault. It was not Buckner's fault. I was watching the Curb Your Enthusiasm with Bill Buckner. <laughs> yeah. Great. It's RIP Curb Your Enthusiasm. Just yeah. It's finale. I don't know if you saw it. Which they landed, Larry David landed the plane this time. Seinfeld was critically uh, hated. Yeah, it was yeah. pan. I had a feeling it was just shaping up to be a redemption. You could yeah. just tell the whole season was setting up. Well, they did, they did almost the exact same thing in the finale, except... Which Jerry Jerry Seinfeld bails yeah, yeah. him out. He gets yeah. him out of jail, and he's like, you know, this is how we should have yeah, ended, ended the, the finale. <laughs> ended the finale. She's like, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Which I think I think finally it's the end of Kurt. I I because yeah. Richard 70s, Lewis is gone. Yeah, and Larry's in his late seventies. Yeah, and uh, what's it? Super Dave died, and yeah. they had to replace him with Vince Vaughn, which was a little yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, well, it was just like his. Uh, 
nephew or cousin. Yeah, it, it, yeah Freddy, Freddy Funkhauser. Yeah. yeah. Which, again, it was very weird. It to, was. To see I, I always like Vince Vaughn, though. I love him, I never but Vince Vaughn. it just didn't seem like his vibe. Of... Yeah, yeah. It's a lot. I mean, Larry just gets so many name guys, his yeah. friends. He had John Hamm a couple years ago. I mean, oh, that, that arc is fantastic. He, he's like the Larry clone, basically. Yeah, yeah. yeah it, that is a fantastic arc. Yeah. And I love John Hamm as a comedian. He doesn't get enough, yeah. I think, as a comedian. Um, all right, anyways. Well, Larry, Larry would love us talking about baseball. He would. Because he, he mentioned 86 as well. He mentioned... In the No, he finale? mentioned 04 because he's the Yankees. Oh, oh, 04, yeah. And then he mentioned the Rangers 94 Cup. Yeah. yeah. It was like the, wor- the worst thing I've ever felt was, yeah, yeah. was 2004. Yeah, he's just talking about suicide. <laughs> um, anyways, what else here? I guess, um, who, who would you name as your winner and loser of the past month of baseball i, I think i i'm really i've been really impressed with the royals so far again you know like you can't read too much into records because nobody's going to be it's not like football where like after 10 games a team could be nine and one and it really stands out because like yeah. nine 90 percent you know the royals are 12 and 7 but they have a plus 40 run differential which is the best in the american league right now um actually it is the best in baseball uh and they've given up only 52 runs they have a league leading, major league leading, mm-hmm. 279 ERA. Uh, and they have one of the most exciting young players in baseball in their lineup. I mean, yeah. I think, uh, of course, you know, we're sick of the Chiefs. Are we going to now have to worry about the Royals? No, no, I don't think so. But um, but they, yeah, to me, they look like a team that could that's going to hang around this year. And I think just the fact that they have shown that they can pitch yeah they've got some exciting players they are the my big winner at least in the american league well who knows we may not even have to deal with them in kansas city anymore they they, be, that's right they might be out of here yeah, I mean, trying to get all that a part owner yeah he is and, well and then hunt is going to threaten to move the chiefs which is insane is that right he's threatening to move because he wants to do renovations and he wants tax dollars for it well i mean robert which, Kraft threatened to move the team to hartford but that was before the pats had become the Pats. The 90s. And like you the, cannot, I don't, I feel like if you move the Chiefs in the middle of a dynasty, that will be it. Like the football gods will come down oh, upon yeah. you and they will say, you took this, you took a dynasty away from a city, yeah. you're done. The Like, I don't, I'm not wishing death upon someone, like I'm not saying that, but like Patrick Mahomes might get into a grisly accident. Or uh, something. I'm not. I'm not even final kidding. Final destination. Like so. Yeah. A yeah. Final destination type of thing. Like I don't. Obviously, I don't want that to happen. But no. but you can't tamper with karma like that. No. You. You, you absolutely can't. No. In sports, of all things, uh, the Red I Sox mean, sold. It's a city. It's not even like oh, in New York where they have 35 teams. Just take one. Over yeah. You'll notice. Right. Kansas City. Oh, if the net, if the Nets leave, no, nobody. Oh, literally, yeah. no one would care. Yeah. No. They're, the Barclays Center is nice and all, but. Uh, I think the, so. I think the Royals are are at least in the, in the American League by a big winner. I would in the National League. I just I just want to throw some love to the Nats because they just took a series in Los Angeles. I know they're eight and ten, but they're exciting. Yeah. They're doing the rebuild the right way. I, I, they're not going to compete yet with the Braves and the Phillies and even the Mets who have totally turned it around. Yeah. But I I just like I feel like Davey Martinez. He should have been manager of the year last year because they won like seventy one games and. You never get again, it non-playoff teams, yeah. but like talk about exceeding expectations. Like they have come along a lot faster than I think people give them credit for. Who's your? Give me your big winners. Um, well, I'll, I'll I'll give it to the Mets. Yeah, because the Mets. I mean, they're you said there were what ten and three over their last yeah. since that zero and five start. Yeah, um, they you know zero and five. They were like Mets fans were losing their mind. Frank yeah. the Tank was destroying everything in his path. Sure, sure. He was a he was a wrecking ball of of, you know, just Mets hatred. Um and he's turned they've turned it around. He's still not happy. Yeah. Of course, he's never going to be happy. It, they win the World Series and be like, "Well, why didn't they do it in 4 right, instead of 5?" Right, right, right. Like um but it's in the American League like I don't really see anyone in the Amer- in the East. I don't uh, I'm I'm going to give it to Oakland. I've I've actually given it to Oakland twice, sure, which this yeah. is actually a legit to Oakland. They're 8 and 11. I mean, they're they're two games out of first place right now. Yeah. Who would have thought? Just they, yeah. they could be doing a major. I ju- I was actually just watching Major League before I we 
came here. Oh, yeah. And they might be pulling a major league. They might. The Sacramento A's. Win the pennant. Oh, God. Oh, uh, I mean, just watch Mason Miller pitch. This guy has an electric arm. They've got themselves a real close. Well, they're going to send, they're gonna send him down, otherwise. you know, because he's doing too good. Right, right, John. <laughs> Somebody had on Twitter, they're like, John, uh, John Fisher, is that the name of the owner? Like, yeah. he, he doesn't deserve someone like Mason Miller. He just doesn't. No. Doesn't deserve it. Um, yeah. My big loser in the American League, and I'm happy to announce it, I'm giving it to the Houston Astros right now. <laughs> We're not stupid enough to count them out. It would be like counting out the Chiefs, you know, when they're like one and three. Yeah. I mean, the truth is Houston is, they still got a loaded roster. And the division is not shaping up to be that good, which is unfortunate because this, you would hope like, oh, they're six and 14 and Texas could be like 13 and six or yeah. something. And, and just get out to a real, yeah, real yeah. big lead at the start. And instead the Astros are four and a half games back and yeah. they're going to get Verlander back. But, um, no, very, very, got to be troubling to see Abreu, Presley, and Hayter all struggling. I mean, that's like, as good, how good of a 7, 8, 9 punches are those three guys? Um, so they're my big American League loser. The NL, you see, I want to say the Marlins because they're 4 and 15, but they've had so, their whole rotation is just destroyed by injuries. Not to yeah. excuse them. Plus, they're the Marlins. They can, they can ride the high of having made the playoffs last year for another decade. It's, it is actually crazy that they went. They were on a 14-year playoff drought. Jeter sells the team, and they've made the playoffs two, twice since then. Oh, so did he sell them before the... I think it, it was, I think it was before it? COVID. Wow. I think it was right before COVID. Um, or not... Did, he, did he own them? Well, now was he, run, he was, was he like just running, running them? I don't know. But now it's the curse of Kim Ng. Yeah. To get rid of her. I would say, though, my big National League loser to this point, um, probably the Rockies. I mean, we, we knew they'd be bad. But, again, I'm just so personally disappointed in them. Just for, for just taking a good, a good thing, a good brand, good organ, a good stadium, and just soiling it with this lack of talent. He was not... He was he left in twenty twenty two. Okay, so I was wrong. So he left, and then they made the playoffs in twenty twenty three. Yeah, yeah. Which I mean, do we even? We're, we're not even counting the the COVID playoffs. No, we'll, we'll I mean, still say it was a big drought. But you gave your loser. Uh, I give him to the Rockies. I mean, the, they're just so bad. <laughs> they're so bad. I mean, the Central, the Cardinals were off to a rotten start, but they've kind of righted the ship a little bit. I mean, obviously the Marlins are looking pretty bad. The Giants have been a little disappointing. I mean, again, 8-11, and 11, they're not out of it, but it's Snell looks terrible. They yeah. haven't gotten a lot from Matt Chapman. I could have told you that. I don't know Soler. He, he just, he's like an all-or-nothing guy at this point. Yeah. He's turning into like a modern-day Chris Davis, but he'll always have that great World Series where he was MVP for yeah. the Braves. I'm going to go, I think in the National League, I'll go with Pittsburgh. I mean, they, they jumped out to that hot star, and now they're just starting to – Level yeah. out even more, which I, I was really high on Pittsburgh. I really wanted them. Yeah, to you something. called them as a playoff team, and you called the Mets as a playoff team, and they're both still doing what you just look at their records 11 and 8, 10 and 8. They're hanging in there. They're, in there, they're yeah. definitely hanging in there. Um, but I'll say they've they've definitely been the loser. They're 4 and 6 in their last 10. So, um, and I think that's like tied for the worst besides the Rockies. Because we can't even count the Rockies as a as a baseball team, they just they just like tank every other ranking you could have. Mm. Um, and then in the, I mean in the American League, I'm going to give it to the Red Sox. They've loser. Yeah, they're three and seven yeah. in their last ten. They just lost Garrett Whitlock tonight. He's going to the IL as well. Oh jeez. Um, so just another pitcher. They cannot shake the injury bug, the long term injury bug. I mean, you lose Trevor Story, you lose. Um, I don't know. There's been like three pitchers that have gone now. Um, Almost lost Rafi Devers and Tyler O'Neill in their collision. Um, and you got your ass kicked on Tim Wakefield honoring day, which is, again, the, the Baltimore Orioles, I think we need an official statement, an official apology from them for doing that. You have to let the Red Sox win. And they lost on uh, Boston Marathon Day as well. They did. I think I heard, I think it was actually listening. It was in the car. I think they said they had a, maybe they were, was it a 500 all-time record? Um, yeah, they're not very good. Something like that. They're not so good. They, so this put them below. They got shut out. But I don't want to jinx anything, but seven shutout innings for Tanner Houck, and he's only at 79 pitches. The, uh, who was it last night for the Phillies threw a shutout? And it's like a big deal now when a guy can throw a complete game. Uh, San, Ranger Suarez, I think, threw a – I mean, it was the Rockies, so that's like – Which I, I actually – I just watched Chasing Nolan today too. 
Oh. Which, great documentary on Nolan Ryan, who is like the exact opposite of what all these pitchers are. Right, He's right. Throwing he 100 so... and he can, he can go the distance. Yeah. Like, yeah, I just, I don't, I don't get why they're not training these guys differently. Like, there has to be, it, it starts at the bottom. Like, it starts in, honestly, it starts in Little League. And it starts in high school. And it's even in, like, single A, it starts there. Like, why are we not teaching these guys to strengthen their ligaments. Well, I, There's I, a clear issue. Yeah. I, I wonder if what's happening, it's like all these teams now, they need tons of pitchers. Yeah. Because it's like, oh, we're going to have guys get hurt. So they get tons of pitchers, but then they tell the pitchers, well, you're only going to pitch an inning, so go throw as hard as you can. Let's just train you to throw 100, 101. Yeah. And then they blow out their arms doing that. What they need to do is develop more Kyle Hendricks type pitchers. Mm-hmm. I know he's struggling these days, but you know, like Greg Maddox, kind of like really teach guys the art of pitching, of changing speeds, of, of movement. You know, it, I don't know. I'm not saying like who wouldn't want to have an arm where you could throw a hundred yeah. and dot it, but it just it seems to lead to bad. What things. was it? Small. I mean, Smoltz made a career on throwing 88, right, and Smoltz painting the court. Or Glavin. 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 Tom yeah. Glavin. And Smoltz made a, but yeah. He he made a career yeah. of throwing eighty eight and but he was putting it on the corners. He had yeah. perfect control, and I guarantee you he could still come into the game today and be pretty damn good. And that was in the steroid era. Yeah, he did that in the steroid era. I mean, that's not something to you know, that's not something to to sneeze at, or that is something to sneeze. At. Is something to sneeze at or not something to sneeze? Not at? something. To sneeze not sne- at. something yeah. to sneeze at. Yeah, I don't. I really just don't. It's almost equivalent to the concussion issue for me, and and my, I mean obviously it's not the brain, but it's a, it's equivalent where it's like the, the health of these guys is a clear problem. Mm-hmm. There is not a clear solution. Well, there kind of is a clear solution. I mean, it's for the NFL, it's stopping each other in the head, but yeah. then you're going to flag football, um, which the NFL did eliminate the hip, hip drop tackle, which is a travesty in right. my opinion. I mean, how are you supposed to tackle a guy from behind? The, at that point, you just gotta let them go. Yeah. Um, but Major League Baseball, I mean, it starts. It starts at the bottom. It starts at you gotta teach these guys. You don't have to rear back and and go for it all, every single pitch. It just doesn't have to no, be like that. I'm watching some Glavin, I love Glavin. Movement, tons of movement. Put the ball wherever he wanted. You mm-hmm. move it to different spots. Tom Glavin, by the way, was uh, like a first round draft pick of the L.A. Kings. He was a great hockey player. So he has a, a tremendous athlete. Could have, could have pursued an NHL career. Oh, and I think him and Smoltz were in the uh, Chick Stig the Longball commercial too. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mark McGuire and uh, yeah, it was. Uh, I think it was just. Was it just McGuire or did they show Sosa in there too? I think it was just McGuire. Yeah, but great commercial. The, the '90s put out some really good sports they commercials. Did. You know. Um, all right, I think that's it. Or uh, I guess what what are you looking for in the American and the National League this week? Uh, well, the, I know the Orioles are headed to Kansas City, and they played them a couple weeks ago. It was a good series. The Orioles took two out of three. It's gonna be. It's actually going to be a really fun series because the Orioles are playing great, got a lot of young talent, and the Royals are trying to basically do what you know, follow in the footsteps of the Orioles with rebuild, and yeah. it, it develops into this. So that'll be a that'll be a fun series. The Rays and Yankees meet up this weekend. Also, uh, the AL East. I mean, at some point, these teams will start beating up on each other. Yeah. And uh, my World Series prediction that never came true last year, the Rangers were playing the Braves this weekend. By the way, the Braves, it doesn't feel like it, but they're 12-5. and five. And it's not, like everyone, you know, obviously expected that. But if I told you that they were going to lose Spencer Strider and that Acuna wasn't going to hit his first home run until today, yeah, you'd have thought, oh, maybe the Braves aren't that good because it's like, man, they've been bouncing the playoffs the first year, that first round last couple of years. Um, and then let's just... Continue. Let's just see if some of these surprise teams can sustain it. Like, look, the Pirates are already crumbling a little bit. The Red Sox kind of crumbling a little bit. Yeah. But then you have teams like the Royals that are so far keeping themselves afloat. And um, let's just see if uh, if the Mets can go to L.A. and keep the Dodgers slumping too. Here's a great matchup that Red Sox fans will cringe at: Nathan Avaldi and Chris Sale on Friday night. They will Is be. It- Matched up against each other. Is that the matchup? Yep. Okay, Friday night. I see TBD against Sale on MLBs. Uh, ESPN at least has Nathan Evaldi. Okay. That's that's going to be on Apple TV, which is the worst broadcast. Oh, it's terrible. I yeah. have ever seen. Is that Rich Waltz, the guy who used to do the uh, play-by-play for the Marlins, I think. 
Um, I don't even know who's on there. I know I cannot stand any of them hmm. on that broadcast. So two 2018 Red Sox World Series heroes yep. are going toe-to-toe in Atlanta on Friday. I, I heard that uh, when, when Evaldi had that epic relief outing in the World Series that like Rick Porcello was in tears and gave him like a standing ovation when he came back to the dugout. Like, oh, I believe that. I would have done that. Short notice, he came in and pitched. What was it? Like six innings. He pitched in relief. He pitched six. Yeah, he pitched from the twelve. I want to say to the from the twelfth to the eighteenth. Wow. He he had the walk off on him, so he was going to go yeah, more. Yeah, Max Muncy. You know, I, it, that whole loss was that whole thing was Ian Kinsler's fault. He made the throwing error. Oh, he was yeah. The defense, and I. Uh, I couldn't believe that he made just a he just slung it like into the dugout, yeah. and I think it tied the game in like the tenth inning, and it almost derailed the whole series. Imagine if the Red Sox had lost that series because they were down the next night, right? They were down like four nothing in the eighth inning. Or yeah, something. and then um, Jansen actually blew the lead. Yeah, Steve Mitch, Pierce. Well, yeah, it was, it was Mitch Moreland. I remember hit a big homer too earlier, and then Steve Pierce. Hit Pierce one? did hit yeah. one. Yes, he did, and that somehow played. somehow he was World Series MVP. I think I think David Price should have been the World Series MVP that year. Did Price pitch twice in that series? I'm pretty sure he I know did. Sale, I know Sale got the last out. He struck out Machado on like a weird back foot slider. Well, it's it was also awesome to see Machado strike uh, the Red Sox strike out Machado because Machado ended Dustin Pedroia's career. career yeah. And Pedroia was in the dugout. He I think he was I don't remember if he was just on like he was on it reserve, or he was right. Coach. He played like a couple games that year. Just yeah. tried to come back, got a ring. I was very happy for Steve Pierce. Steve Pierce uh, was a big part of the Orioles in 2014 when they won the division, and he played for every American League East team. Good guy, consummate journeyman, and kind of that was basically the end of his career, right? I mean, he played one year. He got after. he got a big contract from us, which it was like a was it two years? Or a year I want to say he got a two year deal, yeah. and then it might have been a team option the second year. Yeah, I can't remember. Uh, but David Price, uh, he pitched in three games, started to thirteen and two thirds innings, seven hits total, six walks, uh, three earned runs, ten strikeouts, and two wins. That was Price's. That whole postseason was Price's redemption. Because yeah. all he'd ever heard about was how bad he was. In the well, postseason. 17 and 18, he was, or uh, 16, 16 and 17, 17, he was really bad. And, and he was bad. our ace in 16. Jays in 15, he, he yeah. pitched, I think, uh, or no, he yeah, he was pitching, was, and I think they fell apart in the seventh inning against the Royals in game two. And yeah, um, so the right, yeah, it should have been. Well, there's so many. I mean, you know me. I, I think Peyton Manning should not have been the Super Bowl MVP. Should have been Dominic Rhodes. A hundred yards rushing, yeah. or close to it, or um, they never. Uh, what was it? The one year I went to the All Star Game in DC, they gave um, Alex Bregman the uh, MVP, but Segura had, I think, like the game winning homer, and he was upset. I think they like interviewed him, and he was legit like upset. He's like, <laughs> I should should have been me. He's like, why would I? I should have gotten the car. Well, the fans There's also something. don't fans don't know anything. I mean, the that majority of fans. On the All Star, I don't understand how that works. I think I think it's a vote. I think they opened the vote in the sixth or the seventh inning. Yeah. I want to say, and it's a fan vote. Yeah. I mean, that's well, that's the problem with All Star games too. Fans know nothing. Right. The fan. The fans put in who I think somebody somebody was there last year who played like maybe like five games in the first half. <laughs> like they they sent somebody. I mean, it's a joke now, and especially they took away the actual reason to play the game. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, it's a joke. Uh, I mean, uh, I'm looking. I'm just looking at Red Sox stats from that World Series. Uh, oh, I mean, Eduardo Nunez hit a big homer. Well, Nunez, but Nunez in that in that 18 inning game was flopping around. He he was hurt like three or four times yeah, in that game. Yeah, right. It was like how many times? I remember the announcers even said, "How many times can this guy get hurt? How many times is he gonna yeah. like flop around and screw around on the field?" I think someone got thrown out at the plate too. I think Bellinger gunned a guy out at home in that game. Yeah, it could have been a different. So I, th- I think so. I think you're right. I think someone hit. A, I think Bradley hit a homer off Jansen. It made it one to one, and then I think the Red Sox went ahead, and then Kinsler made the error, and it was two to two, and then eventually Muncie hit the hit the homer to win the game. Was but it game four? No, no, it was game three. The extra game, game three. The only game, the only game that the uh, Red Sox. Lost in that series. Yeah, we scored in the thirteenth. LA scored in the thirteenth, and then yeah, it was three to two. 
I, I stayed up for the whole game. I, I, I remember, remember staying up. It was like two thirty in the morning. I yeah. couldn't turn it off. It was. You know, I remember going to sleep, and I had school the next morning. And high school starts at seven thirty in the morning. So I maybe was on a Friday night though. Was it? Yeah, I could have sworn. I remember that because was... I flew back. I, I had flown back and I got in like just before the game. I was like, I gotta see the game. And little did I know, I would have had six six more hours to watch it. It was on a Friday because the World Series starts on a, or it started on a Tuesday. So it was like Tuesday, Wednesday were the first two, and then the game three was that Friday night. So I remember that's part of the reason I stayed up because I was like, well, it's tomorrow's Saturday. Let's see, October twenty sixth. It's not gonna tell me. I uh, bet you. Oh, it was a Friday. Any, yeah, I was gonna say any, any, every cent in my bank account. I remember that was a Friday night. I'm just looking. I'm like this has like all the things that happened. Fifty six year old Florida man arrested and charged with five federal crimes in in connection to a series of mail bombs. Of course. Sent to Florida man. Prominent Democrats and critics of President Trump. So uh, Florida is always you know Florida man's always doing oh, yeah. doing something. Um, yeah, not that much. A lot of really disturbing things happened on that Friday, actually. I'm not really going to read any more. Yeah, things. I'm good with that. <laughs> By the way, Tanner Houck, eight shutout innings, 86 pitches. I'm now. surprised Tanner Houck is going eight innings. Let him go nine. I'm, they should. Well, they, I mean, you would think they should. All right. I think that's a good place to stop. Yeah. Um, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, the whole thing. Uh, and I think I haven't announced this yet. I mean, it's going, it'll be far down the line, or actually, not that far down the line. About a month from now. Um, so the Chaotically Intolerant Table Tennis League is going to be, the preseason is going to start April 19th. Um, so because I'm one man and I can only do so much, I have to edit videos, I have to edit all this stuff. Uh, this show is going to go on a hiatus starting, uh, I haven't set a specific date, but sometime around that time we're going to go on a hiatus on the podcast for about six weeks. We'll come back in the middle of June or late June probably, which would be a perfect time. Baseball will really be in full swing. We'll kind of get a lot more of an understanding of who is who, you know, what's going on. And I think the All-Star break will hit around that point because it's, what, first week in July is yeah, usually the All-Star break? Mid-July. Um, so we'll have a couple weeks. Um, but, yeah, we'll, we'll go on a hiatus. It'll be, I think it'll be a good break. You know, we might try and release, like, a, I don't know, some sort of, like, analysis show on it i'm not sure i'm not sure yet um but we will go on a hiatus so that's just for the listeners um but again make sure to like subscribe comment share leave it on at home on your tv um get those watch hours up and we will see you on monday